Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, open the uh, public hearing at 6.03. ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> This public hearing was requested by John Holcraft in regards to a denial uh, from the zoning enforcement officer for a sign at, located at 17 West Main Street. Uh, I will uh, call Mr. Holcraft, who's already here. The floor is yours, sir. A point of order, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. This, um, the appeal from Mr. Holcraft is for a sign on his property. Correct. And there is no cease and desist for that sign on the property. The what? cease and desist for Mr. Tomo is for the pets. We the, the raising of commercial animals. We have, so I, I we, think have to, we have to schedule that. That's not for tonight. The meeting was properly posted for what we're discussing tonight. There's no cease and desist. We're not discussing that matter this evening, sir. That meeting has not been scheduled yet. I thought you said we're talking about 17 West Main Street. Correct. There's two issues there. The one we're discussing tonight is the uh, denial from the zoning enforcement officer for a sign. That's the one that I am talking about. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. No, you didn't. Okay. So he's doing an administrative appeal for a sign permit. Correct. Correct. And I don't see any cease and desist here. There's not. You're, okay. re you're referencing the pet complaint. We have not scheduled Oh, okay, because that that's what is attached yeah, to this packet. That packet shouldn't be there. This, the only thing that really should be there is his, his request for <coughs> this evening's meeting, which was handwritten by himself, dated on 8-17-2017. Okay. Then, in that case, I'm going to make a point of order for the following. Um, there's no, um, well, well, let's go through the process, that's fine. We're making I'll, a point I'll, of order. No, I'm gonna hold off on that point of order. So if you have any issues, I'd ask you to address them now before we move forward. Uh, no, let's move forward. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Holcraft, again, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm gonna say something to the ZBA board for starters. <clears throat> this board is the most unprofessional you don't follow the protocol. You don't follow open meeting laws. You don't post things properly. Half of you people don't even know what the bylaws are. You don't know what you're talking about. You are so screwed up, you post things in the paper. All right, Dave, that, that's <clears throat> enough. If you'd like to discuss what's uh, at hand, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, this I'm going to continue this, finishing what I have to say. You're not going to continue okay. because this is a professional board. Okay. And so anyway, I hope tonight that you show at least a little professionalism mm -hmm. And this circus we that we have in this town comes to an end. Maybe tonight we can start somewhere on this board. Okay. With that being said, in short, I'm, I requested a sign on 17 West Main Street, uh, a freedom of speech sign, seeing that uh, we got a selectman, Punk Schneider here, is trying to take the other one away, which won't happen. <clears throat> So a group of people said, let's, let's get another one up. So I'm putting in for another one on 17 West Main Street, which is not in the bylaws. And even if it is or isn't, it's a constitutional right. I don't care what district it is. If it's in my house, residential, I can still put it up. <clears throat> so I'm coming here to do this the right way. I'm going to meet the, the zoning the sign bylaws when I put this sign up. So with that being said, this is not a political sign now. This is a freedom of speech sign, okay? So I was denied by the uh, zoning officer, which once again, he doesn't know how to read the bylaws either. So that's why I'm here tonight. So it's very simple. I'm putting in for a permit to put it up. That's it, it's that simple. Now, if we don't wanna do, I know how the board's gonna vote, that's fine. <clears throat> This is, this is uh, if you violate the First Amendment, civil rights, <clears throat> we have different avenues we can take. I don't even need to come here to get a permit from you because I can just wheel in a tractor trailer box and put a sign 10 by 20 on it, which I can do. 
That's one avenue I can take. So, the floor is yours. Uh, we have town council president. <clears throat> I'm not even going to entertain um, the zoning enforcement officer's interpretation of the bylaw. We do have bylaws <clears throat> that we follow. I do have a copy. Jeff, do you have a copy in front of you? I have a copy in front of me. In regards to the denial of the uh, zoning enforcement officer, was he justified legally? I, I spoke with the zoning enforcement officer and asked him, you know, exactly what his rationale was. And if you take a look under your section 10B, uh, the sign is in a is in a business district. Um, it, there was, at least on the application that I read, something about naming some type of horse park or, or horse area um, in addition to lights goings on. Uh, so to the extent that this is a business sign, if you take a look, at, it would be a freestanding sign under B3. And as such, it would need to be no more than 35 square feet. I think you probably met that. It would need, also need to be, um, it can't exceed 15 feet in height. And I, I believe his application shows that. But what the big issue here is, to the extent that this, the, 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 the uh, number three applies, is that it has to be located at least 10 feet from a public right of way. And there's no indication that it does that, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's my understanding that what would need to be, because Mass DOT or the, or the town mm -hmm. have right of way, we would need to see a plot plan that would show exactly <coughs> where, that, uh, where that sign would be so that we could determine whether or not it in fact met the bylaw. Um, and if you take a look down just at the general sign regulations, I guess to the extent that, it, that it's other than a business sign, it could only be 16 square feet. But I think more importantly, under C5, signs shall not be erected or maintained at any location which shall unduly obstruct traffic visibility or reduce visibility at entrance, exits, or intersections. So again, the zoning enforcement officer just wants to see a plot plan to find out where this sign's going to make sure that it meets the, the, um, the zoning bylaw. Uh, with respect to the signs, um, you know, Mr. Holcraft is right to a certain extent that there are protections um, and there are cases out there, a recent Supreme Court case in 2000, and I think it was 15, Reed versus the town of Gilbert, Arizona, um, where a, a town bylaw, signed bylaw, was challenged and made it all the way up to the Supreme Court. And it, it's a difficult decision to read because there are multiple um, uh, concurring opinions, descending opinions, and then majority opinions. But I think I think what is reasonably taken out of that, as long as the regulation is content neutral and designed for uh, for, for uh, uh, ensuring public safety, then it's likely to stand a challenge. And I think that with respect to what we've outlined here, or what I've just outlined here to you, I believe that in this instance that would that would that would uh, sustain such a challenge. Because this is really, it's content neutral. All that's worried about is safety. So there's a ruling for content neutrality, if well, that's a, if that's a word. <coughs> so 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 they they're they're not even abiding to the constitutional rights of a citizen. What the, what the court looks at is if the regulations are content neutral. In other words, it can't regulate one specific a, 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 a political sign. More You're talking about the bylaws as opposed to the sign as itself. I, I, well, I'm, ta I'm talking about bo both in, in this instance. Your bylaw appears to be with respect to uh, the setbacks and, and whatnot. They're, it's content neutral. I think it's clear that this bylaw, what this bylaw is interested in, is protecting sight lines and not, make, not having some giant sign in the way. But not what's on the sign. But not what's on the sign. And, and, and your zoning enforcement officer denied it because it didn't meet the zoning bylaw, not because he thought it was going to say X, Y, and Z. So we do not have a copy of the application, so we do not see what was applied for. So there were no a distances. A point of, informa of uh, information, please, it has to do with my original point of order. It does say here on the appeal, Z, it, it, it's uh, not copied well, I guess, or not written well, I'm not sure which. The ZEO, so I, I guess it says it was denied by the ZEO. Is that the building inspector or it's is it Mr. Tomo? Zone, the zoning enforcement officer, Mr. Tomo. It's Mr. Tomo. So why isn't there a denial here? I was I mentioned at the point of order a cease and desist, which I assumed was going to be there, but well, it's not I, a cease I was and incorrect, desist. apparently. So where's the denial? 
there's no denial here, so how do we know he even denied it? We don't have anything to go by here. I, this I've, information's I've, I've not I've spoken complete. with Nick, and it, it was denied. I did not see the application. <clears throat> And, and we have town council so stating that Nick, it was Nick's denied. pretty good at denials, so where is it? Thank you, sir. Just pass Thanks. it down to... Mr. Chairman, would you please straighten out Mr. Simons on this 17 West Main Street, please? I don't, think I, I don't think I can. We're not talking about the cease and desist. We're I, talking I know. about a the denial, denial of the permit. On a sign. Right. And this gets back to my question, Jeff. In that application, were there... 10-foot setbacks listed, you stated that the... There, there were, in fact, it's, it's right here, Mr. Chairman. If, if you could just show that, Mr. Zoning mm -hmm. Enforcement Officer, there are... That's there the are, application? There oh, are that's, This is what he submitted? And, and I would suggest to you, Mr. Chairman, that, that those are typically done with a, by an engineer or somebody who, who can at and, least and, plot this out. And as built. Yeah, exactly. I can answer all those questions. Uh, a point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yep. The uh, town council um, gave a lot of information about signs, but the, uh, that I actually did not understand. And um, what I see in our town bylaws in 10B, signs and business business districts. This is a this um, 17 West Main is a business A, is it not? Correct. So it says <coughs> that. Um, the sign that you can have is, uh, has well can have the name of the firm and the products and services produced or available on the premises. There's no there's no business there. It's a single family um, residential. There's no um, second principal use um, asked for or allowed at this time. So it seems like um, there's no reason to be asking for a sign that I can see. Well, that's where the application comes into effect of what was asked for. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. The, this, we're not talking about the bylaws. This oversees the First, the first Amendment constitutional rights of our civil rights of free speech was not designed or incorporated or made back in the early 1700s because of Brookfield's bylaws. The bylaws, that has nothing to do with this sign. Now, as far as Mr. Uh, Blake, Talking about setbacks, I met with the state. It's going to be a 35-foot setback on that side from the center line. So I don't know where it's going to be. It's going to be 35 feet back, and the state's going to make sure it is proper. Now, the rest of the sign is going to be according to the sign bylaws of the town of Brookfield. I do not have to have, this is not a business sign. I don't have to state a business. I'm not going to, I don't set about a horse farm. I'm not putting any name of a horse farm on this sign. It's going to be strictly a freedom of speech, so First you, Amendment sign. You never requested the business use for a sign. That's that. correct. <coughs> I'm just making what Mr. Simon said. I want to make it clear. And in, in regards to the Constitution in the 1700s, Dave, you, you do realize that there's amendments to that. And, and there's, there's more amendments. I know we're not going to get into and that. And but you're getting into that. So uh, and, and I there's, just touched briefly. And there's and talking there's and there's and there's bylaws. And there's case law, which Jeff and had I have mentioned. A lot of them right in here. That reference, everything falls within that constitution. That's so. correct. And I got a whole pile of them. Right so Jeff, here. with with one second, with with that being known, Jeff, um, not requesting a business sign, just the freedom of speech sign. What do you say to that? Well, I, I, I think that. Even if there wasn't a business sign, although he did say something about horse farm, um, he still needs to, as he said, he still needs to, and I think he's agreed, he needs to comply with the bylaw. And the bylaw requires him to be 10 feet back. And I think that it's more than reasonable for the zoning enforcement officer to require a plot plan to see that. And then from there, he can then make his additional determinations as to whether or not there are, there are um, sight line or he's unduly obstructing traffic visibility. But for right now, you saw what was provided. That does not give the zoning enforcement officer, in my opinion, the ability to make his determination. And yeah, we really can't do anything either. At, well, I mean, at this point, I think it, it's a yay or a nay. Either you you uphold the, the, the zoning enforcement officer's denial, or you or you uh, overturn it. But but again, I suggest that there that, that he's not he's not in compliance with the bylaw with that ten foot setback. With an application. With, with his application and, and 
Right, right. I mean, I, I, I don't know that at some point he may come in with a plot plan and, and he may be able to remedy that. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's not before us here tonight. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes. He's double talking. I just no, said he's, he's not. He's not at all. Ten foot is the town bylaws. The state, the state told me it's 35 feet from the center line on that side of the road. Okay. For, for a property line. No. 35 feet back from the center line. So I'm going to go back 35 feet, and they're going to be sure it's on on my land. Even if it's not on my land, they they will go because all the signs up and down Route 9. We just had them up here. The selectman ordered the state to come up and do surveys to try to get my sign removed. So I was up with the state. They said all, mostly all the signs, fences, including the elementary school fence, by the way, is on state property. This, yeah, so this, this, by So my lot. point is, you're trying to search, I'm telling you, I'm going to go by the bylaws of this town. It's not going to be 10 feet back from the edge of Route 9. It's going to be back according to what the state says. And that's 35 feet. The it's not going to obstruct any any traffic vision. The bylaw states 10 feet from a public way. Okay, so well, I'm going to be it, back 35 it, feet. It, it can be interpreted from that line of pavement to grass. Yeah, but I'm going to go or, from the middle or, or sidewalk. The bylaw states from the curb back 10 feet. Yeah. I'm going to go from the center line back to 35 feet. But her, the state's right away down there is approximately 5 feet behind the sidewalk. That's what the state owns. Mm -hmm. So the way that I keep hearing it, he needs to be 10 feet beyond that. So it's more than 35 feet from the center line of the road. But that's where an asbelt would come in to, yeah. meet, to meet the Z. Because the trolley, the trolley went through there. That, that's, that's different in that area. So, so Jeff, he puts up another yellow sign at 17 West Main Street. Green sign. A, a, a green sign that's the sister of the yellow sign on 17 West Main Street. Mm -hmm. he, he meets our bylaws to the T. It's approved. A Does point he, of order, no, Chairman. No, no, sir. A Does point he, of order, I, Chairman. I'm, I'm not going to entertain that. I so think I, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a conversation right now, Tim. Uh, we've been, you've been going back and forth. Tim, I have not been going back and forth with this. Okay, I give up. Thank Go you. Ahead. So, he puts up the sign. It gets challenged. Does he have a constitutional right, if he meets our bylaws, to put up a freedom of speech sign in that business district? It's a, it's a political sign. I, you know, I, I want to see the sign that he puts up. Before I, who cares if it says support our troops or it's not a political sign, or he has no home here? What's the difference? There are there are, as you know, Mr. Chairman, there are significant protections to the First Amendment, mm -hmm. and you know, it, I'd have to see the sign, but I'm just going to tell you right now, there are significant protections for the First Amendment. Which means he has the right to do it. Which means you know, without seeing it, I, I mean. There are significant protections for the First Amendment. Protections for Mr. Holcraft. Protections for Mr. Holcraft. Protections for everybody in this room. Which I don't want to see happening again. Tim, <coughs> do you have a question, comment? Yeah, I have a point of order. Thank you. Uh, before we make this a national case, uh, let's find in the bylaws where his putting up a sign is allowed. The only thing that I can see so far in the bylaws is 10C under the general sign regulations, number one. It says signs, announcements, or bulletin boards, uh, and it, it uh, won't allow you to go past 16 square feet. But the, um, uh, the important part is that it's allowed in all zoning districts in connection with public use, charitable use, or religious use. Are any of these um, Those are all exempt. Being asked for uh, by hey, the applicant. His applicant and his statement here is freedom of speech. Is that a public use? Is it a charitable use or is it a religious use? That's all under freedom of speech. Signs, announcements, or bulletin boards not exceeding 16 square feet in areas are allowed. So how are we going to define what what uh, we we dealt with this as, at a selectman's level, and this is basically for the yard signs that are put up for realtors, for you know church functions, Boy Scouts, things like that. So that that's why that was in there. That was our, our take on that. And I believe it was concurred with town council. 
Um, what town council is stating is that he'd have to meet section B number three, which would be the 10 feet back from the public way, not to be higher than 15 feet and not to be bigger than 35 square feet. What, what about um, C1, public, charitable, or religious use? Is his application fall under one of those? No, those are meant to be excluded from this because if, if somebody wanted to put up a yard sale sign or a real estate sign or things like that, that's why that's written into the bylaw. Mm -hmm. it's so those people will be protected to put those signs up forever. That there's not a size, there's not anything on it. So, but I, I'll repeat, I don't see that his request fits into anything in our bylaws. We have town council. There's nothing in the by of these bylaws that will allow that. Three, uh, 10B3 doesn't count because there's no business there. But it's a business district. But there is no business there. It says only advertising the name of a firm with the products and services produced or available on the premises. That does not fit that single family dwelling. And that's why I asked town council if he put that sign that met the setbacks and size requirements as a freedom of speech sign, where would we be? And what I heard is that he has the right to do that. I don't see in the bylaws where he has a right to do that unless it's under, I could be wrong, but unless it's under- I'd, I'd ask you to forward your questions to town council. Public, charitable, or religious. You can ask Jeff, ask his opinion on your opinion. Um, not the chairman, I'd let you ask him. Jeff? Well, one of the issues you run into here is content-based regulation versus content-neutral regulation. And, and I, I think what you're asking me here is whether or not, you know, we're with the bylaws favoring one or the other. And, and I think that under the Reed case that we start to run into trouble when we start, when we start doing that. Um, and here, uh, the 16 square feet appears to single out public charity and religious uses versus the one up in the, in the sign district, which was more or less, uh, I, I guess it says that you need to uh, advertise a, a business, although I, I do say that his original application talked about, I, I think it was a naming of a horse farm or something to that effect. So I took it to mean that that's what, that's what he was going to have up there in addition to the other stuff. So but it takes a special permit um, to have a second principal use and that premise is a single family dwelling. There is no special permit that exists for a second, second principal use there. So the horse farm, the business, whatever that, just a, it's not part of this discussion uh, as far as I can see. Can I speak, Mr. Chairman? One sec, Jeff has to answer. Jeff well, well, I, I, I'm just going to go back and, and tell you that in order for these things to pass constitutional muster, a sign law to pass constitutional muster, it, it most likely needs to be content neutral. Um, and any interpretation that we can give where it would be content neutral, meaning that we're not going to try to favor some, some form of speech over another, commercial speech over, over, uh, over political speech or political speech over commercial speech, then I think that if we can interpret the bylaw that way, that is, a, that is the, the best way to do it so that it will pass constitutional muster. And I suggest that the, that the interpretation, I think, that the zoning enforcement officer was giving here was of content neutral and merely looking at where the structure was going to be, what the requirements were for the structure, the setbacks, the heights, the widths, the, the, the square footage. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Dave? No, the, Z, the zoning officer, when I applied for this, the reason he denied me, he said it was not in the bylaws. That was his reason. Nothing else. It's not in the bylaws, you're denied. It's that simple. That's what he told me. And about a horse farm, we're not here for special permits. We're here for a simple freedom of speech sign. I don't care if it's in the business district or if it's down on Allen Road, Rice Corner, Lake Road. Strictly, I can put the sign up. I don't care about the bylaws. They don't have any effect on this freedom of speech sign. It's not going to be a second use. We're talking about a strictly just a sign. That's it. If I want to do a, start selling horses or tractors at that location, then I'll come back to the board properly and say, hey, I want to do this in the business district, okay? If I want to have horses there and I'm not selling them, I can do that. It's a right to farm in this town. The witch hunt in this town is going to cost all you taxpayers big bucks because I'm not going to take it from you people and I'm going to keep fighting you. 
And I don't care. So anyway, we're talking about a simple sign, and I made it very clear that I'm going to meet the setbacks and the state setbacks. It's very simple. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Holcraft or town council? I just have a question in general. Is bullying covered under the First Amendment? <laughs> Through town council? I, I don't care what anybody, I don't care who. Jeff? Not. Of course not. Any, right. any reason because that's, that's what I think that sign mostly is, is bullying. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's right next to the school that my kids go to. Mm -hmm. And they're teaching kids that it's okay to harass and bully people, which is not okay. May I respond to that, Mr. Chairman? Go for it. Thank you. We're going to have order in the crowd, please. Yeah, okay. First of all, it's not bullying. It's, it's freedom of speech. It's no different than you people on the computers using phony names, saying all sorts of stuff about everybody in town. You don't even put your own names. A lot of you people are in here, they do it. It's not, you don't like what's on the sign? That's not hate. It's just simple. You don't agree with it. And that's where the freedom of speech is. And there's a big article, if you look at it, in the Spencer New Leader this week about uh, freedom of speech and talking. You ought to read that. There's a lot of other articles out there through the country. You don't, freedom of speech, people say, oh, it's hate, it's bullying. No, it's because you don't like to hear it, you don't agree with it. So then you call it hate. And that's Herb. not the truth. Herb, we're going to go through the board first and then I'll open it up to the crowd. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Oh, we're going to go through the board, man, first. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments, no, no, questions? <laughs> Danielle, Tim, no. Ken? I spoke with the state man uh, last weekend that came to look at his sign, and they put little nails in this, his parking lot, and the whole, the whole, the um, the brothers there. They got the. Uh, keep, can we keep this focused on 17 West Main, not the yellow sign? Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> Anybody else? I saw Herb's hand first. We're, we're going to turn this around. I want to clarify. He keeps saying 30 feet. So where is he putting this sign, supposedly? As far as I'm concerned, this would fall back to the zoning enforcement officer and the building inspector. So they would need that as built. So that this board is just basically either denying Mr. Holcraft's request or approving it. So the well, owner's basically right now you've got nothing to stand on, so you're going to have to most likely deny it he would because need, you don't have any paperwork. He he would need an as built. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I guess Herb didn't hear what I said. I said I was going to make sure that the setbacks are proper with the state, not with the town, because the state has bigger setbacks. Okay? So if it's five feet beyond the sidewalk or six feet, whatever the state says well, is the, what I'm going to go with. The town would have to approve it. Yes, and it's going to be done properly. It will be all within the requirements of the town and the state. Yes, ma'am? I also want to, I'm going to butter. You realize we're talking about 17 West Main Street? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, and um, it's also a historical district, so I'd like to take that into consideration before applying for this because I really don't want that in our, in our neighborhood um, from the previous things that we have seen. Um, I think it's a very disrespectful sign that we have, and I don't want to go forward with that if we can. Um, and it also, and because we're a historical district, that's the first sign you're going to see when you come into our town, basically. And it's never going to be anything that's positive about our town. So with that in mind, I would really like the town to, to consider not approving this sign. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the board? Yes, sir. Uh, Adam LaBarre, I'm just curious. It almost sounds like this passes. sign for Salem Cross or Brookfield Orchards at my shop. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Because it would be a second, I could add a second use and put up another sign. This isn't a second use requ a uh, request, this is a sign request, and you, you have signs on your property as well. I know. So if you wanted to put up a Salem Cross sign, that would be a permit that you could apply for. But it sounds like there is no, he's not asking for a secondary use at this Correct. Point. He's, ask, he's, ask, he's asking for a sign, and specifically in the application, freedom of speech sign. Period. It just sounds to me like if it passes, any other property in that business district could add another a second sign. I, I, but yeah. I'd agree anybody in town can if they yes. meet the bylaws. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. At the last meeting, um, the board had discussed that there needed to be certain documents in place regarding uh, financial matters 
that if Mr. Holcraft owed the town any money, that that could be, there were some document that gets sent through the very various groups in the town, and that that could prevent? Well, the, the building permit requires a signature from the tax collector to make sure all taxes are paid. And those documents are that, in order? That has nothing to do with this board. Yes, it does. It, it doesn't. I I any any, any other question? Did that answer your question, Colin? So, the, the process. So, the, so walk me through that, um, Steve, the process, please. So, at what point, say for instance, you approve this sign? Yep. At what point do you learn that the person's uh, finances with the town are in order or not in order? The onus would be on the, uh, the building inspector. There's a sheet, a sign off sheet that he has to go and get those signatures from. Say he was building a house, he'd have to get it from Herb, he'd have to pay him money, he'd have to get it from the tax collector to make sure his taxes are in order. I believe the money that's in question has nothing to do with tax collection, it's with a, a special detail from the moving of the house. So. So you also kind of broke the money? No. He, he, from what I remember, it was it no. was Verizon that he owed money to, and there no, was a question about that. No, that's not true. You're making a false statement. Yeah. Well, like somebody you, had to pay the police officer, so he had to come out of the town's account. But it's, that's and not on my It's not on me. The has not been reimbursed. But it's not for me. It's and Verizon. That, and that's not on this board, right? Right. All right. I, I hope you can respect that. Yeah. Sharon? Point of order. I'm chair of the planning board, and I have researched this. The statute, which the town of Brookfield has adopted, said that permit granting entities, not the building inspector, any permit granting entities shall deny a permit to somebody who owes, basically owes the town money. I have read this in the bylaws, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. So you are stating something that is factually incorrect. Well, you're, you're incorrect because it was never presented to this board through the application. It doesn't or matter. It's in the town bylaws. <coughs> All right, Sharon. Beth? So, a couple points. First of all, is uh, um, the existing sign is, is really more in line with the billboard. Billboards are prohibited. Existing, what do you mean by existing? I'm, I'm referring to, to, the, to the current yellow sign. Um, however, what's, what's more important is that all signage is considered an accessory view regardless of its purpose under our bylaws, okay? So any signage being an accessory use, okay, there's, there's been no, there's no like real coherent reason to place that sign there to the other lady's points, historical district. An accessory use needs a special permit in order to avoid it being a detriment to the general atmosphere of the district that it is part of. So without having a house bill, without having clear definition of the size of the sign, the design of the sign, the color of the sign, okay, all of those things from a standpoint of in a historical district, an accessory use, it, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a district that's really not intended for signage unless that signage is, is really in support of an endeavor at the property okay it, it leaves the neighbors open to a reduction in the quality of the general atmosphere of their neighborhood okay that's the primary purpose for limiting accessory uses we are flying in the face of our own bylaw and the reason for protecting the abutters and protecting the neighbors from an, from an inappropriate accessory use of the property if we don't have firm, clear design parameters regarding what that is going to be in that area. So Jeff, I ask you this, accessory use thrown into the conversation. What say you? Well, from my reading of your bylaw, I don't see that there's necessarily an accessory use component to it. Um, but I, I'll just keep going back to the safety. The purpose of this is to regulate signs that obstruct traffic visibility that pose a danger through disrepair and threat of collapse and disrupt the aesthetic environment of the town of Brookfield. So I think that these are all co content neutral 
um, bases for us making these regulations. So again, um, the, the fact that we have setbacks that need to be met, heights that need to be met, sizes that need to be met, I think are legitimate basis for regulating these signs. And the zoning enforcement officer has based his decision on those criteria and not whether or not they, that what, what the content of the sign is. But again, I think we have to be careful about, about being content neutral. And if this board approves Mr. Holcraft's request, he still has to meet the requirements of the bylaws. Well, I, I think that, yes, of course. Um, but, but I also think that the reason he was denied was because he didn't meet the requirements of the bylaws. And one of those requirements was at least 10 feet back from the public right away. So if we, I don't, if we denied it this evening, he could reapply with those parameters. He would have to reapply. And you would have to, I mean, you, you saw the application. I have not. Uh, well, you, you, you saw the drawing. Oh, and I think that yeah. is the application. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, there, there, there's, a lot on, there's a lot there that's, that's missing. Uh, it, it wants for a lot of stuff. And one of them would be that plot plan. So, as a highway supervisor points out, we can determine exactly where it is. Now, you know, I understand from, from Mr. Holcraft's testimony, that there are that there are that, that there are others in town that, that have that have built like a fence in in the uh, in the right of way. So that's why we need to know where that right of way is, and and a plot plan that, that plots all that out will give the zoning enforcement officer the ability to make his determination under the bylaw, not content based, but rather safety. You know, safety. Any other questions from the crowd, Peter? Just going back to the other question about why we're considering this when Mr. Holcraft, if Mr. Holcraft owes the town money. So the, the question is, hasn't he been fined and, uh, for non-compliance for his other property? And uh, aren't those fees still on the books uh, while that whole issue is being appealed? At, at, when you appeal it, they're not relevant. The court has to rule on the appeal before they become well, relevant. But the fines have been imposed by the the zoning enforcement officer. Sure, and, not? and it's in a court of law now under appeal. And so because it's pending, he owes the money until the court decides that he doesn't owe the money. I, I would, I would, no. I, I agree. It's just the court has to make a ruling. Well, ultimately, a judge has to issue with respect to the funds. My understanding that there's at least one property out there that fines were assessed on. It was one, I, I, I think it's, it's not the, the, the other sign property, but another one. But the way it works is if the fines remain unpaid, then uh, during an enforcement action or the like, we would then go into district court. The district court would, would then do a show cause hearing to find out whether or not there was cause uh, to issue. And at that point, it becomes a criminal matter and it goes before a judge, and then the judge makes a determination that the fines are owed and how much are owed. And it's not until that happens that those fines are truly uh, 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 owed. Um, and, and with respect to that chapter 40, section 57, there's also a process in that particular, in your Bible, with respect to, to withholding permits for uh, non-payment of, of fees, taxes, betterments, and the assessments and the like. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Yes, sir. Chairman, yes, sir. Order. We spent a lot of time talking about this um, word of sign is position because of this section 10B3. And it says in 10B3 that one sign or other advertising device of a freestanding nature may be erected for each business. Um, so there's no business there. So I just don't see that 10 B3 has anything to do with this hearing. It's, it's not germane. What is germane is 10 C1, and uh, that's my point of order, because I yep. said what it is, and I'd like to see if you'd like uh, to entertain the motion. <coughs> not yet. I want to give everybody that came out of okay. opportunity to say what they want. Anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? Yes. Um, my question would be like, through the chair of town council. Yeah. Through you, okay, through our attorney, has um, and I know this is about a new sign. However, 
My question is related to the current sign. Has the current sign been reviewed in terms of harassment? The things that are put up there, are, are they, could they be considered harassment? And does that have any bearing on the new sign? With, with respect to signs, with respect to the old sign, I don't think that it has any bearing on the new sign. The new sign should stand on its own. Um, the one, the, the one issue that, that I do point out is, it's my understanding that the old sign was actually erected in the right of way. So this would make the fact that you would get a plot plan even more compelling uh, to make sure that doesn't happen again. With respect to what's on the sign, um, you know, I don't know everything that's been on that sign. I do know some of the things that've been on that sign, and you know, whether whether we like it or not, the First Amendment protects a lot of that kind of speech, um, opinion speech. And Colleen, I'm going to tell you, in my six years as chair, we we saw two opinions, and there were several opinions prior to myself. Every single opinion came back that he had the right to do what he was doing. <coughs> One thing that does seem to open to this conversation is given the lack of quality and consistency in the application and the site plan, given that this there is at least some historical documentation that the signage, times when the Zoning Board of Appeals has issued a special permit that the individual concern tends not to comply with the conditions of the permit. Uh, I think that there's a pretty solid track record there. There's a pretty solid track record that regardless of whatever sign regulation you use, the one that has been erected clearly exceeds the limits set forth from a physical standpoint uh, with regards to the size of that sign. So there's a track record of non-compliance with the details of the regulations with regards to our zoning laws with this particular individual. To me, as a town official, I would think it's incumbent on yourselves as town officials to at least consider the fact that given the materials before you with regards to that application, that application does not adequately protect the neighbors per our zoning regulations that the physical confines of that sign are going to be consistent with the intent of this town's bylaws. You do not have that for you today. All right, Beth, what we have before us is, is a request for the overturning of, of a 100%. I think you can do better than I can. Now, first of all, we listen to Beth's propaganda once again. And number two, there's nothing in the bylaws because you people just want more and more and more laws in this town. There's nothing in the bylaw that says I have to do a sign a certain way, okay? And, and, and down my other sign, my other sign is perfectly legal. The sign, the town signed off on it. The state knows it's in the state layout. So is everyone else in this on Route 9. They're all in the state layout too, all the way to East Brookfield. Because I had it checked out, okay? So if my sign is wrong, everyone else is wrong. Almost everyone, not everybody. So you can't sit there and spiel propaganda saying the sign's gonna be a certain way. It's not in the bylaws. Show me, show me it's gonna do a sign a certain way. No, I'm gonna meet the signing bylaws the setback steps and that's speaking. That's, I think we're I'm both done. Make the sign by, it's going to meet the sign bylaws, and it's going to be a nice sign. All right, Dave. So, so I I believe that the application wasn't correct, Dave. Um, well, you can say whatever you want to say. I, I believe that Mr. Holcraft and everybody in this room has the right to put a sign up on their property. That that's my belief. Um, it's almost ad nauseum that I've, I've made statements in front of this town that my grandfather died for this country to protect that constitution. And you, you can make as many noises as you want out there. Um, it's a constitutional right. I believe it. I would die for it myself. But unfortunately, I don't believe the application was correct. So I'm going to entertain a motion to deny the request uh, with the ability to reapply for the permit correctly. Do I have a said motion? Make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor? Yeah, we have, uh, I have, have one second. I have a discussion for that. Mm -hmm. When you write this up, um, 
unconcerned about how you're going to write this up. It's going to be exactly what I just stated. Okay, well, if you're going to have the reasons, I'd like to know the reason why you're denying this. Generally, you do put down the reasons we, why you deny We just something. did because the application wasn't filled out correctly. What part was not filled out the, correctly? The setback. I just told you what the setback was going to be. In, in the application, Dave, it's not correct. You would, you okay. would need it. All right, so you want, you can do what you want. In the meantime, I'm going to wheel in a hay trailer. i got to get a hay trailer for my hay. And on the side of that, you want something to be nice or you want it to be that way. So until you guys get your stuff together, that's how it's going to be. My belief is that so, you get your stuff together. No, no, no. Get, get a plot. I don't need. I don't. I don't need, need to come plot. before this town. You I can just bring in. A, I can bring in my hay no, trailer that, that's and your, put a sign that, on it. That's your right. The, the issue okay. before us. And that's fine. The issue before us, as I see it, Tim. Okay. That's is, good. Is the setback? I mean, I knew you were going to vote this way. Anyway. I'm going I'm to appeal your decision on that. There's no appeal. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a motion I, and there's a second. We're discussing it. You can vote in favor of the motion or you can vote against the motion. Okay, I'm, I'm going to um, um, ask that you guys vote against this particular motion because we can bring it right back up again and we can put different reasons down. <clears throat> what I think is the correct reason for denying this permit, it's not because of the 10-foot setback. That is absolutely bogus and erroneous. Uh, erroneous. The um, the only way that we can well, it's not in the bylaws anywhere in the bylaws to allow his sign, unless possibly it's under the uh, one where it's um, in connection with public charitable or religious uses. And the way you write it up just leaves the door open for more and more trouble. And it's just. Well, I think it's kind of consistent what I've seen with this board. So we, we um, just, I'm, I'm asking for this motion to uh, be denied and we'll make another notion, a motion. Just because we deny the, this particular motion doesn't mean that we can't deny the appeal. We, we, had, we had over 45 minutes of conversation, which kind of primarily revolved around the issue why Jeff states that Mr. Thomo denied the permit, which was the setback. So this has everything to do with that setback and the bylaws that are in front. Right, no, I'm saying that that's incorrect. All right, so duly noted. Mr. Anybody? Chairman, that's not the reason I was denied. You, and the same thing with Tim, same thing. It's not in the bylaws. Just because it's not in the bylaws does not mean you can't do something in town. How about yard sales? Is, what page is that on? We, we've gone over, that's, that's what Tim's referring to in regards to those three issues. Yeah, you're not, great. So the bylaws do not have, does not reflect what I'm doing here, except the size and the setbacks. What I'm hearing from and I just told you what this, I just told you the setback was going to be proper. I don't think he's getting it. We need, somebody <laughs> needs to say it properly, <laughs> with minds on it, okay. wherever it's going to be proper. That's why I we understand that. I'm going to deny it. But you people don't get what you, I'm you, saying. You know, you're not getting it. You're not getting it, Bill. All right. It's not in the bylaws. All right, Dave. Uh, we're, we're done. Okay. Any, any further discussion so on this? Back your any measurements, Bill. Dave, stop. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion before us? I will. Hearing none, all in, fo in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Nay. Danielle, are you for it? <coughs> for it. You're for it? So three to two, the vote carries. But yes, sir. In your supermajority. I know. So you've essentially. Uh, granted is a paper. We did not. Yes, you did. We, we'll make another motion. We're just, I'm, I'm saying we're denying that motion that you made because I think that motion it was, was it was It was very clear the motion that was on the floor and what you voted for. Jeff, can, what do you do now? You can, you can reconsider. You can reconsider it right here. That's right. Move for reconsideration. So, I, but 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 the but the, re, the reconsideration would be the motion that we voted on, correct? Well, it would be to reconsider a, 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 the, the 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 denial slash grant. So I'll entertain a motion, Tim. I okay. Thank so you. it did not carry, Pat. Okay. You, you I move, I move that this board deny the appeal. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You'd move to reconsider. <laughs> Which would be a majority vote. You move to reconsider. Okay. I move to reconsider the motion that we deny this just appeal that we, and for a particular reason. No, so you have to, I'll entertain a motion to reconsider the vote that we just took. 
Correct, Jeff? Correct. And if we don't? If it, if it doesn't pass, then, then the... Can we make another motion? Yeah. We, we didn't approve <clears throat> the appeal. We just, we would just deny the motion. We can make, a, why can't we make another motion uh, for denying the appeal with a different reason? Can we just reason? Can offer the documents to make our decision? That's what I want. Just to affirm the motion to, to deny the appeal. I just feel like that's like a major thing. That doesn't necessarily mean we grant the appeal, does it? He's not going to do that. I mean, no. I'm trying to tell you how to get so to the You move to reconsider. Yeah. All in favor, yes. And okay. then you make another motion. That's all. Amend the motion. Amend no, no, you wouldn't amend the motion. You would then make another motion. You would move to reconsider the matter okay. and then make another motion. Oh, the matter. That's what I want. Thank you. <laughs> so I, uh, I move that we reconsider the matter. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, Unanimous. Entertain a motion, Tim. Okay. So I, I move that the board um, uh, deny the appeal from uh, the applicant for the reason that it does not fit the bylaws. There's no, no place in the bylaws that allows that particular sign. And I can be specific if you want well, that's to. That's your motion. Do we have a second? Hearing no second. There's no second. Hearing no second, I'm going to make a motion to deny the appeal based on the fact that there is no setback listed <coughs> on, the that, on the application that would be coherent with our bylaws. So basically the same motion that we voted on last time. So do, do I have a motion? No motion. Do I have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? And again, we just learned the hard way that if there's not a four to one vote, the vote carries, the applicant gets his permit. <coughs> With that being said, all in favor of motion. Aye. 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 All, all opposed? Was it a unanimous vote? Yep. A unanimous vote. Permits denied. Okay, I'll be back and the trailer will be brought in. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'll entertain a, yeah, entertain a motion to adjourn. Entertain a motion to adjourn at 6:55. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Aye. 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 So, Kenny. <laughs>